Hello, today we're gonna walk you through how to use and read your Garmin Marine radar. And we're gonna also remove the misconception that radar is only for big boats. Too many times people think that radar is very expensive and really only meant for big boats. But the reality is that Garmin has many options that are affordable for small boats like R29 Ocean Runner. We have the 18 inch dome, the Phantom Dome on our boat and we absolutely love it. To see the options that are available for your boat, you could go and visit your local Garmin dealer or you could check out the many options that are available for your boat at Garmin.com. All right, now that you know that radar is an option, no matter what size vessel you have, let's take a minute and explain how the radar is hooked up to your system on your boat. Whether you purchase the open array radar or the dome, they're mounted on the top of the console on the roof of your boat. Then the radar connects to the back of your GPS unit via an ethernet cable. Then what happens is that your NEMA 2000 will allow the image to be displayed and controlled across all of your screens. Having a radar is a great feature that we always utilize when traveling at night and in low visibility conditions. We like to run with the radar overlay on our navigation chart on one screen and the traditional black radar image on the second screen. This allows us to identify marks on the screen and compare them to our navigation chart. This will allow you to identify if the mark is a fixed object that is on your navigation chart. One very important thing to note is that as a safety best practice, you should always check your navigation side lights to ensure that they're working before you go out on the boat. The other very important thing to check is your all round white light. This is the one that's used for navigation and when you're anchored that's mounted on the top of your boat on the roof of the boat. When you get your radar mounted on your boat, you also want to ensure that the light when you stand it up is taller than your radar, whether you have the open array or the dome. This is going to ensure that the radar that you mount on the boat does not block your light. Remember, if your light is blocked and other boats cannot see it, it can result in a very dangerous situation with a collision at sea. All right, now before we dive in and show you how to read the radar image, I wanna take a minute to explain how radar works. The marine radar works in a similar fashion as the sonar on your boat. The radar is gonna send out a signal and when it bounces off of an object, a boat or land, the image will be displayed on your screen. Now keep in mind that just like your sonar, lower density items are gonna appear smaller on your screen and obviously items that are higher density such as large tanker ships or larger vessels are gonna appear larger on your screen versus smaller boats that will show a smaller image on your screen. Now let's jump right in and show you how to power up the radar on your screen. All right guys, so here we are. We're on our navigation chart on the screen and to find your traditional radar image, we're gonna show you the overlay here in another step, but in this step to find your traditional radar screen, you're gonna hit home and then you have all the options are gonna pop up on your right hand side and you're gonna click on the one that says radar and just so you know, once you connect the radar, this will automatically pop up on your uh, screens here. So you'll be able to see it once your radar is connected, correct? Directly to your system. We're going to go ahead and press radar and then we're going to go ahead and press the single range for the purpose of this uh, tutorial which is the very first one and your black radar image pops up on the screen and tells you that it is ready to transmit. Now your radar is now powered off so you want to go ahead and power it on and you turn it on if you see on your top left hand side of the screen you've got a button that says XMIT off and this is for transmit you want to go ahead and turn that button on and you will see it pop up on your screen and say that it is spinning up and now you start seeing the images on your radar screen and we're going to explain what those are in a second but uh, we want to show you now how to adjust the gain and if you come over here you see your second option that you have uh, right underneath the transmit is the gain button and when you go ahead and press that, you can see how you can auto bird, auto high and auto low. And you can also press the up button and increase your gain. And you see when you increase the gain, what that looks like. And then you can start turning down your gain and we'll do it slowly so you can see what that does on your image. Makes it a little bit harder to read when you have the gain up very high, especially when you're a new user. You don't wanna have it down too low that you can't see images. But what I would tell you is keep tapping this thing down in the beginning until you get used to it, until you start seeing more of a black screen. And right there we're at 87%. We'll 
we'll go ahead and tap it down again, 85. And so now you're looking at more of a black screen with the pronounced images right there. When you're done adjusting your gain, you can hit back. And the other thing that we wanna show you is how you can adjust the range. So right now, if you take a look in the middle at the bottom, it says one mile. So that's letting us know that our range is set to one mile. You can hit the plus and minus buttons on the right hand side here and you can zoom in. You see now we're at a three quarter of a mile range. Now we're at a half mile range around the boat. And if you want to increase your range, you start pressing the minus button. And you see here now we're at a two mile range from the boat, three mile range. And you could keep going and, and keep zooming out as much as you want. Now what it does make it harder to read the image because it's a lot further away. So for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna go ahead and zoom it back up here, leave it here at a mile and a half right now so you can see that. But this is how you adjust the range for your radar, the gain, and how you turn it on. Using the overlay feature is a great way for new users to familiarize themselves with what they're seeing on the radar image because it's going to allow you to identify the marks that you're seeing on your radar screen and be able to cross reference them to your navigation chart to identify whether that mark is a fixed object like a channel marker now let's jump right in and show you how to add the overlay on top of your navigation chart all right so now we are back on our navigation chart you can see that there's no radar image on the screen to go ahead and add the radar overlay on top of your navigation chart you simply hit the home button and right on your charts option this is not going to be under the radar option you see right here the second one from the end it says radar overlay so we're going to go ahead and press that radar overlay and now you see as it starts to load that your radar image is being displayed on top of your navigation chart. If you turn on your boat and you do this step before you do anything, remember that your radar image will not display if your radar screen is off. So we're gonna go ahead and click that off real quick, okay? And you can see that now it's gone. And just like we showed you in the first step, you have to press that in the top left hand side where it says X Mint, which is for transmit right under our GPS feed. We're going to go ahead and press that button and the radar is going to start spinning up. And now the radar image is starting to be displayed on top of your navigation chart. We'll pan here a little bit so you can get a better image there of how it's bouncing off of the land and the channel markers. Now that you know how to turn on your traditional radar screen and the radar overlay on top of your navigation chart, I want to jump right in and show you and explain how to read and identify the images that you're seeing on your screen. All right, guys, so now <clears throat> we're showing you both of the screens so you can compare the images side by side from what the traditional radar screen is and the overlay that we put on top of our navigation chart. And you could see here, we are we came out and we were sitting right next to the channel of Black Point Marina, which is the marina that we used to come out of. And you could see the channel markers. If you take a look and compare them from our traditional navigation chart, and you could see the blips from the radar that it's putting there. You can also see them on the black radar screen. Okay, and you could compare, you could see the channel of all the markers coming out. The other thing that I wanna know, we got lucky now, we got some boats coming out of the channel is that when there are boats on the screen or vessels that are moving you could see them on the screen you could see the green mark here just off of our port bow and they are color-coded so when the vessels are traveling away from you and they're not coming in your direction the vessels are going to be marked in green now as a vessel is coming towards you you will see that in like a pink magenta color at least on my screen I see it that color and th that means that there is a risk of collision because that vessel is coming towards you as as that vessel were to pass you or you change your course and or the other vessel changes their course and that boat now is traveling away from you and there's no risk of collision it will change the color again back to green but important to note that you'll see that the color changes on your screen uh, with other vessels as they are approaching or traveling away from you the other thing to note here is if you take a look at your traditional screen and I'll move it over a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better is that you could see how it's marking all of the land right you see it all along the coast it's marking the red if you take a look at the traditional radar screen you could see that it is also marking the land now 
if you're wondering why it doesn't keep going over land is remember I told you that the radar works like your sonar works. So when the, the signal is traveling from your radar, it's going to hit an object and it's going to bounce back and display it on your screen. So it doesn't keep going over land because it's already hitting the land and coming back to your screen, letting you know that there's something there. For those of you that are not familiar with the area that I'm at right now, if you take a look here, you could see that there's a large red blip over the land and you're probably wondering, well, why is that? that large mark over land if I just told you that it's not going to continue to go over land. And this is going to be the next section that I'm going to explain, which is how the radar beam can read from your vessel and the range that you have. But what that is right there is a trash mountain, those big trash mountains that the uh, waste management uh, system has in all the various cities. Well, we have one located right there. And the reason why you could see that image is because that mountain, that hill, if you want to, we call it trash mountain, but it's higher than the rest of the land. So your radar beam is hitting the land, but it also keeps going and it's hitting that hill or that mountain, if you will, that trash mountain and bouncing back to your screen, letting you know that that section there is even higher than the rest of the land. The other thing that the radar system will allow you to see is weather systems. And this is very, very useful when you're fishing offshore to ensure that you don't get caught in a real nasty storm. And so you're gonna see the weather systems are gonna be the, the darker the color, it'll start with like a light green and then it just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing the darkness of the color. And if you see like a very bright pink, it's very severe when you start seeing it red and that pink color, very thick, severe heavy rain, I would definitely stay away from those uh, images that you see on your screen when you see a weather system and it is a very uh, dark red color or you start seeing it in that pink, bright pink color. Uh, very bad weather system that you want to steer away from. Now I want to take a minute and explain what I was talking about in the previous section about the trash mountain and explain how to calculate the range or how far your radar could see. This is a very important calculation because most people do not know this calculation. And not knowing or not understanding this calculation can give you a false sense of security and make incorrect judgments when reading your radar screen. To calculate and understand the range, or simply put, how far your radar could see around your boat, you will need to go ahead and measure the distance from your radar placement to the water line. For simple math, we're gonna say that it is nine feet. Your radar is mounted nine feet from the water level. Now you need to calculate the square root of that number. So the square root of nine is three. Then you're gonna need to multiply that number times 1.22. So three times 1.22 is 3.66. 3.66 is how many nautical miles your radar can see away from your boat. Now I know what you're probably thinking. The radar says that it has a range of 40 miles and it does, but for the radar to see it, there's many factors that go into place. The main factor is the height of your radar placement and the height of the object that's pinging back to your radar screen. Keep in mind that your radar is not gonna see smaller objects or vessels, channel markers, until you get closer to it. Now let's talk about why this is such an important thing to know. If you're navigating at night or in low visibility conditions, there could be a potential hazard ahead of you that you can't yet see on your radar screen because you're too far from it. Or the vessel or object is too low in the water. So when using your radar, you must continuously be reviewing your radar screen, especially when navigating at night or in low visibility conditions. And always ensure that you are navigating at a safe speed. A safe speed is defined as a speed that you can stop your vessel in ample time to avoid collision with a potential hazard or another vessel. When we're navigating at night or in low visibility conditions, we always travel at a safe speed. Because even if you're familiar with the area that you're navigating in and you know where all the channel markers are, you have no way of knowing if there's another boat in your path with no lights on. This is where the radar is a major necessity because the radar can see what your eyes can't see. To give you an example, there was one time that I was navigating back to Black Point Marina, coming across Biscayne Bay. And this is an area that I feel very comfortable in and we navigate 
many times a week at night. As I was approaching the Black Point channel, I started seeing a stationary mark on the radar screen ahead of me that I knew was not the channel marker. So I immediately turned on my lights, changed the course of the boat, and I brought the boat to idle speed. As I continued to drive on the new course at idle speed with my lights on, I began to see a boat off of my port side that was anchored with no lights fishing. Without the use of my radar and constant monitoring of my radar screen as I was navigating, this could have turned out to be a catastrophic incident. So make sure that you understand and calculate that calculation of the radar to the water. Take the square root of that number times 1.22 for your vessel. And always remember that if you have a radar when traveling at night or in low visibility conditions, you must be using your radar. And when you're using your radar, ensure that you're consistently monitoring your radar screen as you're navigating. All right, so now let's talk about when to use your radar. Like I just mentioned, radar must always be used when traveling at night or in low visibility conditions. Now, having said that, you can't wait until you're in a nighttime or low visibility situation to start using your radar. This can be very dangerous because a new user is not going to be familiarized to the images that they're seeing on their radar screen. I would highly recommend that when you install your radar, that you use your radar all the time, especially in daylight hours. This is going to ensure that you start familiarizing yourself with the images that you see on your screen because you can cross-reference them with the naked eye. Practicing this time and time again will get you familiarized with the images that you see on your radar screen. Remember that when boating and fishing, safety is the number one priority. If you want to learn more Garmin tips, check out our Garmin Marine playlist where we're continuously uploading videos to help you with your Garmin units. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there.